Mixdown Media Productions. When you're one unbalanced piece of audio from losing your shit. This is the Podcast Therapist. Well, hello, friends. It is the Shan Man, radio broadcaster, podcaster, and podcast producer. And welcome back to another edition of The Podcast Therapist. And today we are doing a Q&A Thursday just for you. I am taking some of the questions that come off of my YouTube, questions that come into me through voicemail. Uh, if you want to leave me a voicemail, I will share how to do that here in a second and also emails as well. So I have been promising this episode, or at least I've been promising this segment for the past couple of uh, weeks, I would say maybe a week and a half, maybe not necessarily two weeks, but the last week and a half. And I have promised that I would answer some of those questions. And one thing that I have learned in jumping back into podcasting, because I've always been the person who has been the producer, like I've always been the person behind the scenes, creating the audio, creating the social posts, creating all of those things. One thing that I've noticed and I, I probably should have picked up on a long time ago is that it's not necessarily about how much you put into your podcast. It's more about the value of what you can focus on. So what do I mean by that? So I try to focus on now these days, I'm trying to focus on one particular topic at a time. So if I have a guest, we are going to cover that guest. We are going to talk to that guest about a series of topics, you know, whether that be about monetization, uh, production value, uh, delivery techniques with speaking, uh, social media marketing, uh, podcast marketing, things like that. And I have learned that you don't necessarily have to create a an episode that is an hour and a half long. You just need to create an episode that has value that really focuses on one topic. This is what I have learned. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that this applies for each and every uh, podcaster that is out there because I know there are some podcasts out there that uh, are at least an hour and a half, two hours long. I mean, look at Joe Rogan, my friends from the uh, Crime and Sports podcast. They also have... Uh, Uh, another podcast called Small Town Murder. Those episodes are like two hours long. So they're doing like four hour, four hour podcasts sometimes, um, you know, throughout the week. But the difference between my podcast and their podcast is that mine probably is more of an educational uh, podcast where I'm asking you to, well, I'm I'm presenting to you uh, tactics and strategies. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take those tactics and strategies and I want you to put them into action. That's really what I want you to do. Those other podcasts, such as a true crime uh, podcast, you know, small town murder, those podcasts will length, uh, th- those podcasts are at length two hours long and they do educate, but they are of entertainment value. So the niche is very important to understand here. It's very important to get a grasp on what that niche is all about because we are getting entertained. Those guys do their research, but they do it for entertainment purposes. It doesn't allow Uh, for people to take too much of an action and put something into action for themselves. The the audience is mainly being entertained, so they are allowed probably a little bit more time. Now, there's no data to back this up, like I've said in the past for some of the assertions that I make. In this particular case, there is no data that will back this up. I, I, I don't have any data that I can present to you right now, but this is just my assumption just because <clears throat> because of the popularity with those podcasts. So just understand that the nature of your podcast, if you are doing it for an educational purpose and you're using your podcast as a marketing tool, then you should be able to um, ask someone to, or to ask someone to listen to what you have to say and then ask them to take an action and put those things into action. If it's for entertainment purposes, then there's a little less action that the audience has to take. So this is something that I am learning and constantly learning uh, by jumping back into the podcasting game <clears throat> Excuse me, and doing this uh, for myself. Excuse me, I'm over here dealing with a frog in my throat. So let's go ahead and get to Q and A Thursdays. Not sure how long today's episode will be, but I just want to be able to answer the questions the best that I can uh, and as thoroughly as I can to help you out. If you ever want to leave a voicemail or you have a question, it could be about podcast marketing. It could be about uh, creating. You know, it could be about production and audio. It could be about uh, questions with your website. It could be questions about just about anything. It could be questions about self confidence issues. Um, you know, a lot of what you're 
you're going to be doing and creating with your podcast really turns this into a podcast business. If you want to monetize the podcast, if you're not looking to monetize the podcast, then uh, you know you can likely move on. But you're going to learn that there is going to be a level of commitment that you will need to have if you want to turn your podcast into some t- form of monetization model, which turns it into a business. So you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Go to the podcasttherapist.com and you can scroll down to the contact me section, leave a voicemail right there up to five minutes you can leave your voicemail or just email me and i will get back to you as soon as i can some of the uh the voicemails and the emails that i've gotten back to well i haven't gotten back to some of them but i've been getting back to them as soon as i can uh of course i'm still i I still have my own clients over here that i'm editing podcasts for and i'm also creating videos and podcast content so my schedule has uh has definitely changed and evolved over time so uh we will um we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible so let's jump on over to the uh YouTube channel. We'll answer some questions on the YouTube channel first. Then we'll j- we'll get to some uh, emails, and then we'll do a couple of voicemails with that. So I want to start in uh, reverse order here, and well, actually, we're going to start from the, the latest comment uh, that has been done on my YouTube channel, according to what my uh, comment section is here on my my interface or my my screen. And uh, if you didn't know that uh, yesterday I dropped a brand new YouTube video that you can go ahead and check out. It talks about how do you get better audio quality. And I break down all the steps of uh, the different styles of audio recordings that you're going to have. So uh, you might want to go check that out. Just go to my YouTube channel. It's the latest video there. So this first question is coming from Shahirar Minai, Minai, I think is how you say your name. Uh, I'm sorry if I, I, I'm mispronouncing your name. I don't mean to butcher it at all. But this is his question on uh, my latest video. He says, um, I want to start blogging on podcasting, but I am unsure if I can get a good amount of traffic from podcast blogging. Please give me your opinion. So thank you for asking that question. And I did respond back to him. And I wanted to know if he wanted to start blogging about podcasting because the way it was written, it sounded like I thought he wanted to create a podcast and then blog about it. I I wasn't too sure. So I really needed clarification. But his question really is more about he just wants to start a blog, a website, and he wants to write about uh, podcasting itself. So after I asked him this question, he said, yes, sir, I plan to blog about podcasting and covering podcasting. All aspects of podcasting, such as how to start uh, podcast equipment and such. Uh, I plan to write uh, articles, but I'm not confident if it's uh, a good niche of blogging or not. So the question here uh, is that, yes, the niche is probably going to be good enough for you. So, uh, you know, anytime someone says, I don't know, I don't think the niche is good enough is probably someone who's not thinking that there is someone else out there that. Uh, is interested in that niche. I mean, your niche might be model train sets, and you would not believe that there are niches about model train sets and uh, people who have created either podcasts or YouTube content or blog content that is about model train sets. A few years ago, I went to a conference. I believe it was called Infusion Con. Oh, I, I know it was called Infusion Con, but it was a few years ago. I can't remember which year it was. But I remembered that there was a person up there that had a toy store, and I can't remember where it was. It was somewhere in the Midwest, and his toy store really focused on model train sets. That's why I bring this up. And he thought to himself that the niche was not going to be uh, strong enough for people to, uh, you know, uh, to latch on to. And it wasn't until he started implementing these strategies and creating landing pages for his website and creating areas in which people could have the opportunity to learn more about he, him and his business. And would you believe it that he turned this model toy store um, for train sets, I guess, this train set model uh, niche into a million dollar business. So when you say things like, I don't think the niche is good enough in order for me to get jump back into or to jump into, you have to remember that just because you podcast about blogging does not necessarily mean, or just let me put it this way, just because you blog about podcasting doesn't mean that uh, people won't latch onto your content. Some people will not appreciate what I have to say. They may not latch on to what I have to say. I may not resonate with them as well. But there may be someone out there that does resonate with me. And not everyone is going to be my audience. 
I have a specific purpose of why I create these podcasts, why I create my videos, why I do all of these things. So just so you know, if you're going to jump into the podcasting space and write about podcasting, the niche is probably perfect. You just have to provide value. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do is you just have to provide value. So thank you for your question. Let's jump on over to the next question. Uh, this one is going to be coming from Joe, Joe Hahn, and he writes, uh, let's see here. I know that he had written a question about uh, laws and regulations. He says, uh, what laws or regulations should I be looking for or mindful of when starting a podcast? Are they, are they the same for each state? Uh, besides just like a business license, are there like broadcasting laws or regulations we need to be mindful of? So this is a very simple que- uh, answer to the question. Uh, no, there are no regulations. There are no, you know, nothing that is state by state. You can just go ahead and start a podcast. Uh, it seems as though Joe is just getting his podcast started for the first time. So no, there's nothing like that that um, that you have to be mindful of. Just the one thing that you should be mindful of is just to not copy other people's content. Be very mindful of intellectual property uh, because someone can report your intellect that property, and then they can uh, put you know either send a cease and desist or uh, send someone to take legal action. I'm sure after you. So just make sure that you're not copying other people's content. That would be the most important thing there. And I think he had a follow up question. He said, "What about guest agreements and co host agreements? Should these be written by a professional or a law office? Can?" Uh, can a template program provide similar result? Now, this is something that I think is interesting because I get asked this question every now and again, and people want to know, should I have a guest agreement to have someone come up onto my podcast? And, you know, this is going to be up to you. This really is totally up to you. Now, if you want to have a guest on your program, then I would think that if you're going to invite a guest onto your program, you're trying to give them the exposure. So the idea of you inviting someone onto your program, uh, should be mutually beneficial for both of you guys. So if you're creating these guest agreements, I don't know how good they are. I don't know the reasons behind them. I've never understood the reasons behind them. Maybe I'm sure there's there's areas and there's niches and there's industries where you do need to have guest agreements. Excuse me, but I don't see them being necessary because I look at the relationship of you and your guest creating content together to be mutually beneficial. You're creating content to provide value for your audience and your guest is coming in to help you create that content to provide value for your audience, but also your content can be used by your guest to help promote their content as well and provide or produce authority for themselves. So you see that it's just very mutually beneficial. So I don't see the reasons of why you would need a guest agreement if you're trying to help each other out. Now, if you're jumping into an agreement where money is being exchanged, then maybe, maybe what you need to do is to create a co- a contract, and that might be where you need to go with uh, seeking some legal help, uh, an attorney to help you out. So if there's an exchange of money, I would say go ahead and uh, search out an attorney to help you out, okay? So that's a, another great question. So thank you for that question, Joe. I appreciate it. Uh, let's jump on over to this question here. This comes from the big podcast, the B I G podcast. And he commented on my video for, um, how to move a podcast off of anchor. Now, those of you who have watched my YouTube videos, um, it's not that I don't like anchor because they are a business just like everyone else, but I've never been a fan of the, the service itself. It is, uh, it, it's a very clunky service as far as, customer service getting back to you. So I do not like that service. I would much rather pay for a service where someone is going to get back to me because I'm giving them my money. So I expect service in return. When you're jumping onto anchor, you're doing a free service. And so, you know, when you get things for free, you're probably, you know, you're going to get in return something that is of equal value. So just understand that that's the reasons why I don't like anchor. Many of you guys have anchor and that might work for you. I understand that, but It's just not something that works for me. And I would much rather have the customer service, the analytics that fall behind it, and then, of course, the added features. That's why I always promote Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout provides so much more than what Anchor has as far as service is concerned. So let's get to the BIG podcast question. This is more of a comment, so this might be a little bit longer than what is expected. Uh, He says, I really appreciate this video because I've been trying to redirect my podcast from Anchor to Libsyn. 
And after almost three years of you doing this video, I'm having the same issue you speak on in the latter part of this video. This honestly has helped me understand why I'm having trouble. Being that Spotify owns Anchor, I don't believe having a small team is the issue in my opinion, because at the time I had mentioned in the video that um, that Anchor has a small team at that time, and that, that was the truth at that time. I don't know what it is these days. Uh, he goes on to say, the last time Anchor responded to an inquiry, it was someone acting like they didn't understand what I was asking when I re responded, uh, explaining what I was asking. I never received a response to that email or any email I have sent uh, since then, I don't think people should use Anchor. This is his uh, This is his opinion. He says, I don't think people should use Anchor if your podcast is something you want to do for a while and grow because it seems fishy the way they handle their customer. I will say this process is hard to understand by just reading articles uh, these sites provide and it has taken me at least two weeks to fully grasp what all needs to be done. At the same time, there should be more help readily available since Anchor claims to be the creator. Uh, say, I'm sorry, Anchor seems... Anchor claims to be for the creator, in my opinion. He goes on to say, you said we should just start from where we left off because in the video, what I had said is that how we move a podcast off of Anchor and onto a paid service is that you would need to start creating episodes that would leave off from where you had last published off of Anchor. So you created your last episode on Anchor and then you would just pick up where you left off on your new hosting provider. So he says, you should. Uh, you said we should just start from where we left off on the episode, but if you have a smaller podcast, do you think it's worth to just gradually remove old episodes from Anchor and re-upload them? So this is a really good question. When you're creating content on Anchor, you have to remember that you're uploading into their platform and it is all owned by Spotify. The idea of Anchor and Spotify acquiring Anchor was to get more people onto the platform to make Spotify more valuable. Now, Spotify has shown value and they are touting these days uh, so many millions of podcasts that are out there. But a lot of these podcasts are people who've either started free accounts, I'm sure, and they've started a podcast. It's all done on their phone. And, you know, they just start podcasts. Just, it's just, to me, it's just it's it's noise. It's just noise on that platform. They aren't serious podcasters. They aren't people who are taking this seriously. They aren't. They want to take it seriously, but they don't know what it takes to take the podcast seriously. So you're seeing that there are these numbers that are inflated with podcasting on uh, Anchor and on Spotify. But the answer to this question is: when you're doing a podcast on Anchor and you're trying to move or actually replace the RSS feed so you don't lose your subscribers. You cannot do this on Anchor. You can't replace your RSS feed. It's almost as if your RSS feed is stuck with Anchor and you can't change the RSS feed. So you can't go to another service. You can't go to a Libsyn or you can't go to a Buzzsprout. Take that RSS feed and plug it into Anchor. They won't let you do that. So as a result, what ends up happening is that you have to start a whole brand new account with your hosting provider and Submit your podcast to all the directories again because you don't have access to Google Podcasts, to Anchor, I'm sorry, to Google Podcasts, to Apple Podcasts, to Spotify. You don't have access to those management accounts. You have to start those on your own with your own email. And this is where I think this is the fundamental flaw with Anchor. They want to get people on that platform, but they don't give the creator the access to those accounts. If you're unhappy with Anchor, you can't get into those accounts and switch the RSS feed from an Anchor RSS feed to a Buzzsprout RSS feed. This is why I have a big problem with that service. They may tout that they have all of these people starting podcasts, but they still have not given the creator the control of the accounts in which those areas of or in which those podcasts are syndicated. So what I'm talking about is you if you did this in Buzzsprout and you started a podcast in Buzzsprout, Buzzsprout shows you that you have to start accounts or use e your own email address to have access or gain access to those accounts. Anchor does not do that. So you have to be very careful of what you're doing on Anchor. So his question saying, you know, should I just start from, you know, pick up from the last episode that I did on Anchor and then just roll it into my new hosting provider on my, you know, on everything else that I would be syndicating to. 
I could, you could do that. But what I do know is that I think either on Lipson, I think, I think you could do it on Lipson and you can do it on Buzzsprout. You can just reach out to the customer service on those platforms. You should be able to do something called a migration. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to contact customer service on your new hosting platform, reach out to the, reach out to them and give them your anchor RSS feed and tell them you want to move your content from anchor over into the new platform, Buzzsprout or, or Lipson. This way you don't have to upload all of your content and you can't, you don't have to waste space or, or time or whatever it may be. Um, when I talk about space or time, I'm talking about upload time or uh, upload space. And, and of course your own personal time, you don't have to waste all that time to do this. Lipson, Buzzsprout, Simplecast, those all, they should all do that migration for you and then you can pick up uh, your podcast from there on the new platform. I hope that makes sense. So just reach out to your customer service hosting provider, which is, you know, whether it may, whatever it may be, and ask them to do a migration, but you have to provide them with your RSS feed. So great question. That is a great question, the BIG uh, podcast. So let's jump on over to another question here on YouTube. This one coming from Michael Perfect. He says, "Are the and this is, comes off of a video that I had posted on um, about can I use my website to host my podcast files? And you know how I feel about you know websites, um, especially when it comes down to hosting um, audio on your website." But he asked this question. I think it's worth reminding you: Are the only reasons for you not uh, for not using your own web space hosting on your podcast are one space and two bandwidth? If the podcast gets really that much attention, so these seem really. These things, uh, these things seem really easy to fix in exchange for retaining full control rights over your content. And then he says, bonus question, if you really insist on selling us on dedicated hosting, what do you think about Anchor? Again, you know my feelings about Anchor. Don't use Anchor. I would not use Anchor. Get into paid hosting. Plus, when you get into paid hosting, those services have been coded with the code I don't know, you know PHP, HTML, I don't know what the code is. I'm not that person. XML, I don't know what that is. Those platforms have done the coding. They have done the hard work for you so that your metadata, metadata being your description, your titles, episode numbers, how these podcast episodes show up in different platforms, they have done all that work for you. So as a history lesson, in the past when podcasting was uh, just starting out, you had to go in and do all this stuff on your own. And you had to use... Um, God, I can't even remember what the name of the service is. Feedburner, that's the name of the service. It's an old service that um, you would use through Google. And it was really the means of which you could get the content out there. You would create your own content and um, use an RSS feed or create a, a feed through Feedburner. And it would do it for you. But it came with a lot of issues. It really wasn't built for podcasting. And uh, it, it became very difficult to get your podcast out there. And there were so many steps that you had to take in order to get your feed out there. And of course, with that, it, you know, it didn't have the metadata that you would be able to uh, be coded for, you know, how your podcast shows up in uh, podcast platforms. That's why you have hosting providers that do this for you. They do all of that for you. And so that was the that's the brief history behind that using feed burner for your podcast. And of course, with that came like all this coding. And so you didn't just no one wanted to do that. So that's why you have hosting providers that do this. So that's why you would want to go with uh, a hosting provider. Uh, even if you go with anchor, that's great. You can go with anchor. But again, I would say that you need to go with a hosting provider that does all that for you. Just know what you're getting into with anchor. Uh, because if you're not looking to make money, if you're looking to just have it be something that uh, is more of a hobby, then yeah, I guess Anchor would be your answer. But if you're wanting to create something that where you want to impact the world, I would say go into paid hosting, all right? So let's jump into an email that um, it actually comes from John Verno. I know we talk about John quite a bit on this podcast. Uh, we've done some calls with him. Uh, but uh, you know, he wanted to follow up with me about something that um, he noticed in my podcast uh, for Thursday's edition last week, and his question was, uh, Shannon, my audio sounded muffled compared to your audio. Was it because I was on a cell phone going through my roadcaster, then captured by you, or does my mic settings and audio sound that bad, or is your audio so much better 
because uh, of your environment. Just curious. So as you heard that interview last week with John Verno, if you have not heard it, I would recommend that you go back to it. It would be last Thursday's episode. <clears throat> and you heard that John's uh, call sounded, actually, it was just a phone call is all it was. And the way that I created that was that I took the phone call over Skype. So I have a Skype account. That account is for phone call purposes only so that I can make actual phone calls through Skype. So I can use it on my phone or I could use it on the computer. It doesn't matter. But the feature behind this um, setup that I have is that I basically have set up my home recording studio like a radio station's uh, set up at home at, at the radio station. So when people tell me like, oh, you got to always do them on Zoom or you always got to do them on StreamYard, this is not necessarily the case. This is some internet thing that I don't know who brought this up or whatever, but uh, you know, the standards that people have set for themselves is like how they capture audio. These are just things that are made up. We can't always believe what is what is out there on the internet, you know? So we have to remember that when we're hearing content from a radio station, they're dealing with phone calls. They, they can't Skype into someone. When you're dealing with capturing content at mass, you have to use phone calls, phone lines. That's why we have these systems at the radio station. So I just set up my home system to sound as though as that I was doing phone calls at the radio station. So my setup is having a Skype account, opening up the Skype app on my computer, setting up the settings to where my microphone is fed into um, the MG10XU and that the Skype settings are set to MG10XU for the input. The output will be the same for the MG10XU. So that whenever I record into my DAW, my digital audio workstation, I am capturing the Skype audio. I'm capturing the phone call itself. So if I dial out to someone, I'm capturing phone filtered sound. I'm not capturing computer sound. I'm capturing phone filtered sound. That's how Skype has that set up. And of course, I'm calling on a phone. And there's a different filter. There's these phone filters that they have on phones. So that's what you're going to be capturing. So it doesn't matter if John was on his phone recording through his roadcaster. It doesn't matter. It was a phone call to phone call recording. And that's why we are getting kind of that, I don't know if it's necessarily a muffled sound, but it just sounds like a phone call frequency sound. So that's what you're getting. So just understand the difference between the sounds of what you're, you're going to be capturing. If you're doing StreamYard, obviously you're going to have to set up the settings differently maybe. Uh, not just for yourself, but maybe for your guest. Your guest may be using their laptop's microphone or their webcam's microphone. And you're obviously going to get a different sound. The microphone really does make a difference in this case. Thanks for the question, John. I really appreciate it. And let's jump on over to another email question. This one comes from John S., a totally different John. Uh, his question is, or his title is actually Podcast Production Question. He says, I enjoyed your episode about podcasting like a pro. I noticed that in your interview with your guest, that both of your images appeared on screen in full screen at the same time as opposed to Zoom, which displays both people in the screen in these small viewing windows. Can you please tell me which video conferencing software you use to get this full screen slash large screen view of both of you? I would really appreciate your advice, John. So uh, thank you for the question, John. I appreciate it. So it's going to be the uh, software that I am talking about. I continue to talk to talk about a lot. It's StreamYard. Uh, StreamYard has wonderful capabilities for you to not only conduct the interview, but to set up the interview. Uh, you can get started with a StreamYard account for free. You can use my affiliate link. So if you decide that you want to jump on over to it, it does give me a commission on my end and it helps me create more content and have that account um, active and have this podcast active. Just go to thepodcasttherapist.com slash StreamYard and um, you can get started right there. But yeah, that is the software that I am using. The ability to get someone to join in on a StreamYard is very, very simple compared to Zoom. Um, I still like Zoom, uh, believe it or not. I still like using Zoom. I don't like the audio quality of Zoom, and I think you would know that from watching my latest YouTube video that I released yesterday, so you would notice that. So I do like using Zoom, but I like StreamYard much better just because when I set up a meeting or I set up a call, uh, all I have to do is just um, send a link to my guest um, and it's not this extended, super long link. It's just a simple link to that guest. And all they have to do is click on that link and join via 
uh, web browser. They, you know, so if you're using an iPhone, they would have to use Safari. Uh, if they're using Android, I believe they could use whatever web browser that is on there, or they could use their computer. But the barrier of entry is so much easier to use. And then, of course, you've got to talk about the features, the features, including, you know, that split screen that we have where it's, um, you know, you can use that full large screen and it's a split screen for you to display maybe YouTube videos for your podcast. Uh, you can do screen sharing. You can allow your guests to take control of the screen and show their screen as well. There's so many functions with StreamYard that I highly recommend using it over uh, Zoom. But if Zoom is something that you have to use, great, you know, use that one. But I think StreamYard is a great solution for podcasters, podcasting specifically. It's not meant for, um, you know, podcasters. I think Zoom is not meant for podcasters. I think it's just meant for meetings itself. So that's why um, I recommend StreamYard. So go check that out. Okay, let's jump into another email. This one coming from Sam Griffin. And I think uh, I wanted to share this email with you because I think it's very inspirational to help you with your podcast, depending on what the objective is of your podcast. I think this is regardless. It, it's inspirational for uh, folks who are doubting whether or not they should create a podcast or not, or you know, especially depending on your age as well. So Sam writes, hi, Shan, man. I'm about to be 50 years old and I've been teaching high school for 28 years. I've started a podcast during COVID and I'm up to 66 episodes. Congratulations to you, Sam. Uh, it's doing pretty well, but I made it for my high school students because I didn't have, I just didn't have time to dive deep into any kind of soft skills this year. The show is called the Teacher Answers Podcast and it's doing pretty well. I just hit 5,000 plays, which is some sort of traction. The show is ad-free, and I make it for my students past and present, but I'm finding a lot of people listen to it. I'd like to spread this word as to as many people as possible. I've been following your videos on YouTube, and I like the direction you're going. I love what you're doing, and rest assured you're doing the right thing right now. Sam Griffin um, out of Ohio. So thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate you sharing that email, and congratulations to you on your 66 episodes as of the email that you had sent to me, I think that is a very huge accomplishment. Most podcasters can't even get past 10 um, and it can become a very uh, big struggle for them. So, uh, you know, I want to address one thing that he did talk about, though, which was taking it into a larger direction. So if he does have listeners, Sam, if so if you have listeners, Sam, um, and you want to take it into a larger direction, then uh, taking it to a larger direction might mean that, you know, I don't know, you might want to turn a lot of those podcast episodes into value, uh, content value as a blog. Um, listen to the previous episodes that I had on the podcast therapist last week, last Tuesday's episode, where I really talk about the value of a website um, and the value of email marketing and the value of capturing people on social media. This is something that if you're going to take it to the next level, you need to start capturing those people, but you also need to start building out a, a structure of business for yourself. So you might have to um, invest in some form of uh, software that allows you to collect leads from people to capture emails. Uh, but you know, it's just going to be up to you being a teacher and being a, you know, you being a teacher and me being a former teacher, I understand the, you know, the, the constraints of, of, of financial constraints that you might be facing. Uh, so this is where if you have rabid fans, they will be willing to donate to you or help you uh, create more and better content. So don't be afraid to reach out to your audience and ask them to contribute to your podcast efforts so that you can make better podcast content for them. That's just something that I think every podcaster should do, even if you know you put that call out there for your audience and no one donates, it does not matter. Podcasting has long lasting effects. It has a longer game than say radio because radio you're listening to it and then it's gone forever. You don't have you don't have it there to listen to again. But with podcasting it sticks there. It's like internet content regardless. It's going to be content that people will listen to or listen to again. So remember that. It goes with all of your content. So if you guys are going to create content, I highly recommend that you start seeding links that you know you will be using in the future. Seeding those links in your podcast and seeding them on your website so that people will be able to access those links later on down the line. So for you, Sam, I would say start seeding things, seeding web links, page links, uh, ways people can connect with you, ways people can donate to you and, um, you know, and, and set, those set those things into play and put those things into motion so that it can benefit you 
in the future. Okay, so we're gonna jump into a voicemail. Let's take one from Leon LeGray, and uh, here's what Leon had to say. Hey, Shan, this is uh, Leon. Uh, I record a show called the Leon LeGray Podcast. I was just listening in midway of in your episode of the Podcast Therapist, and this is very, very educational, and I love the uh, concept of the Podcast Therapist, and I was... I did. I stopped midway. Uh, which podcasting statistic is the most important? Uh, that episode I, I'm currently listening to, and you know, a lot of the, the newcomers or the younger folks are very much into social media, and I will, I will say that I am pretty guilty of it. But I, I did learn about a year ago, is that um, having a podcast isn't really enough, and a lot of the times. Uh, I've had to come back right there and say, you know, I have to, I have to have a reach because there's a lot of people are searching for me and having a website is so, so important nowadays. And I don't think um, not many, many people do understand why having a pod, a website is important, including your podcast. And it's always, always good to have a website. So, and your um episode just hit me right there and said hey you know this is an awesome episode and i just um shared your um uh podcast a podcast therapist to a friend of mine over in the uk and he's always always learning just like i am and my podcast uh the leon the great podcast is about technology uh thank you so much for all your knowledge and what you do I've been a subscriber to your YouTube channel for uh, for about over six months, and it's been an awesome ride. Thank you for what you do and the uh, episodes that you create on YouTube and also just YouTube, uh, your podcast as well. Keep it up. Thank you so much for all all your knowledge. Thank you, Leon. And yes, I do believe that having a uh, a website is extremely valuable. Again, I want to encourage you if you're listening to this Q and A. Uh, today, I want you to go back and listen to my episodes, the two-part episode I talked about with podcasting metrics. So part one and part two, I recommend that you listen to them in order because I believe that the biggest value and the biggest asset of your podcast is going to be your website. It's not your podcast. It's your website where people can connect with you. So I'm glad that you're working towards that, Leon, and continue to work towards it and growing and building an audience. So thank you for that voicemail. Let's do another one, and this one comes from Greg Walker. Hey, Shannon, it's Greg Walker, a.k.a. The Big Dreamer from Columbus, Ohio. I'm starting my podcast soon. It's titled Dream, Grind, Hustle. It's about athletes, singers, dancers, recording artists, entrepreneurs, professional wrestlers, Anybody who had a dream, anyone who had to grind, and anyone who had to hustle. And brother, listen, you have taught me so much. I'm not a techie guy at all, but you have got me wanting to start this podcast. So I appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing, man, because we are here not to be blessed, but to be a blessing. And you are a blessing to me and millions of people, even if they don't tell you. Much love, brother. Remember, anything you want in life, all you have to do is have a dream, grind, and hustle. Peace. Ah, that makes me feel so good. Thank you so much for sending that voicemail, Greg. I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. And thank you for uh, watching my YouTube videos and listening to the podcast. It means so much to me. And uh, of course, uh, thank you for the motivation and inspiration uh, with your voicemail. I appreciate it very much. So we're going to leave it at that. That's going to go ahead and do it for today's Q&A with uh, the podcast therapist. If you have a question or you want to reach out to me, I recommend that you jump on over to the podcasttherapist.com and scroll down to that contact me section and click on that voicemail button so that you can leave me a voicemail and we could do more of these podcasting Q&As for you to answer your questions. So your question could be about podcast websites. It could be about your podcast production. It could be about podcast you know, audio. It could be about... Uh, you know, maybe you want to jump into podcasts for, you know, YouTube with video. I will be able to answer that question for you. Email marketing. Maybe you just need the encouragement. Maybe it is more about life itself. I'm more than happy to help you with just about any problem it takes for you to get your podcast moving in the right direction. So I want to thank you again for listening to today's 
podcast Q&A on this Thursday. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, today, or this weekend is going to be Super Bowl weekend, so I hope you get a chance if you're a football fan to watch the uh, Super Bowl since it's going to be a very weird Super Bowl in COVID times, but uh, it'll be a memorable one for that mo- for the most part. We've got Tom Brady. Tom Brady uh, with a different team in the Super Bowl again, which is kind of remarkable in itself. So again, thank you so much for listening this week. I will be talking to you guys next Tuesday. And uh, have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. The Podcast Therapist. Mixdown Media Productions.